Hey, what is going on guys? Nick Heron here with another fantasy football facts video for you guys today. If you missed yesterday's video, be sure to go check that one out. It was about Ezekiel Elliott's suspension. Today though, we're going to be talking about the trades involving, involving both Sammy Watkins as well as Jordan Matthews, two wide receivers that were moved yesterday. So this is kind of interesting news for fantasy football. Of course, we've got Sammy Watkins being kind of the bigger star of the two, despite the fact that he has missed quite a bit of time due to injuries. But Watkins does move from the Buffalo Bills over to the now Los Angeles Rams. So this is going to be an interesting upgrade for the Rams offense. Obviously, Jared Goff needed additional targets. He really didn't have anybody great out there. So now he has somebody who is a legitimate superstar wide receiver. He will continue to be the wide receiver one we're projecting, of course, right now. Uh, just given the fact there's not a lot of talent there. But you do have to keep in mind, Jared Goff was probably one of the worst rookie quarterbacks that we have seen in quite some time, unfortunately. So despite the fact that Sammy Watkins is going there, it's hard to say necessarily that he's going to immediately have great chemistry with Jared Goff. He is going from a, a quarterback, though, in Tyrod Taylor, who is a decent player, but he's not a spectacular player as far as getting the ball to his wide receivers. Tyrod Taylor himself does have fantasy value, but a lot of that comes from the fact that he is one of the best rushing quarterbacks in the NFL. So that's why he's been able to actually finish as a top 12 quarterback in each of the seasons that he has been a quarterback for the Buffalo Bills. So kind of interesting though that they did decide to move on from Watkins. I, I guess it just happened happens to probably be because they wanted to uh, move on from somebody that's always getting injured and obviously Buffalo did get EJ Gaines in return uh, as well as a second round pick so you know decent upgrade there on defense for Buffalo obviously their defense still remains pretty good as far as fantasy value goes but not an elite defense uh, obviously Sammy Watkins moving over there he's continued to have those injury concerns and he still will have those injury concerns at least but hopefully he's going to be able to get on the field early this season for the Rams and start to produce with Jared Goff, start to get some of that chemistry going. It's going to be difficult, obviously, moving from one team to another this close to the season. We don't see this very often, especially with star players. So it's not expected, again, that right away out of the gate that Sammy Watkins is going to start tearing it up. If he starts the season off very slow, it would not be overly surprising, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he is going to be terrible all season, so do keep that in mind as well. Um, I am going to be dropping Sammy Watkins just a couple of spots in my rankings. I'm not moving him substantially down, but I do believe this is going to negatively affect his fantasy value just a little bit. The guy who really probably benefits the most from this is actually Jared Goff himself. Now, obviously, he isn't going to be a fantasy player for most leagues anyway. He's still going to be probably a bottom five starting quarterback this season. But he does add some interesting potential, at least, for two quarterback leagues. Because obviously, if you're in a two quarterback league and you're in a 12 team league, you're talking about 24 quarterbacks starting each and every week. So every quarterback is going to be rostered. And obviously, you need to have guys for backups to put in uh, and obviously start on your bye weeks and things like that if you even have those. Uh, it's difficult sometimes to find them. So obviously, again, in two, two quarterback leagues, every quarterback is viable. So that's why we're going to talk a little bit about Jared Goff. Um, still going to go undrafted, like I said, in almost every standard 12, 14, even 16 team league. He shouldn't be drafted. But in those two quarterback leagues, he's a guy that we do need to consider at least a little bit. Um, I, I don't really, again, expect that Jared Goff and Sammy Watkins are going to hit it off right away. But I do think, again, that this is going to help Jared Goff's overall abilities uh, to potentially move the ball down the field. Watkins is a guy who does demand attention from the defense when he's on the field. And having a guy like him, as well as maybe a guy like Tavon Austin, somebody out of the slot, like maybe a Cooper Cup or somebody like that, those guys are going to have the potential to move the ball on offense this season. And I think that's going to help, of course, with Jared Goff's ability to gain yards and potentially score touchdowns and things like that. Um, adding a superstar talent at wide receiver is never something that hurts. It's just going to help the offense as a whole, obviously. So I do bump Jared Goff actually up a couple of spots, but he is still going to be down there at rank number 27 for me. So again, he's not going to be somebody that I'm considering for a standard league, even as a backup quarterback at this point. The other Rams wide receivers are going to have a little bit of an interesting situation here. Obviously, Watkins is going to reunite with his former Buffalo Bills teammate, Robert Woods, who we do expect to play quite a bit this season. Um, obviously, Woods was projected to be their number one wide receiver this season as far as at least fantasy value. But obviously, the Rams offense is going to get better as a whole because of Watkins, which is a good thing. 
but it could potentially hurt the targets that a guy like that um, Woods was going to get. Watkins should be the most targeted guy in this offense throughout the season. Maybe, again, not right away just due to the fact they don't have great chemistry between he and Goff quite yet. But once he does get acclimated in that offense and they start to design plays for him and things like that, obviously Watkins is by far the most talented guy on the roster. You could make a case that Sammy Watkins is one of the 10 most talented wide receivers in the league. So they are going to look to get him the ball. Obviously, they made a a big move here by giving away a second-round pick and a starting cornerback to acquire him, so they have to do something to get him involved in the offense. I think that Sammy Watkins is going to substantially pull down the targets of the other players in this offense, which is going to negatively hurt their fantasy value. So you do have to move Robert Woods down. You do have to move a guy like Tavon, um, Tavon Austin down. And again, I do think that it's going to hurt potentially Tavon Austin's overall ability to even get on the field. I do actually think that he's going to see more time as a pure returner at this point and kind of a gadget type of player, which they've done with him fairly successfully, but we just haven't seen Tavon Austin actually develop into any sort of a consistent wide receiver in the NFL. So I think we're going to see him kind of get used in the more specific types of ways that they like to do to get him the ball, whether it be out of the backfield as a running back or a slot corner or a slot wide receiver going over the middle, drag routes, little things like that. I think a lot of that kind of stuff is exactly what they can do with with Tavon Austin to get him into open space. And obviously, as a return man, he is a very dynamic threat. He's a guy that can make tons of plays. So, you know, again, his fantasy value overall is going to be hurt, especially if you're in one of those types of leagues, the old school leagues, where you don't get points for returns for individual players. You only get them for your defense slash special teams. That is something to obviously consider. But I do think Tavon Austin maybe not going to be getting nearly as many snaps as he otherwise would have to start the season. Another guy who is going to be greatly affected by this, I think, is Todd Gurley. Now, obviously, Gurley was in most leagues the only guy getting drafted in the Rams offense. And I still think that he is going to be the guy that's going to be drafted by far the highest of any of these players. I don't see any reason why Watkins is going to go up above him or anything like, like that. But Todd Gurley is going to get some positive push because of this trade, in my opinion, especially over the course of the season. Again, maybe not right away, but I think that once he starts to get acclimated in the office, offense, Sammy Watkins is going to be able to stretch those defenses, pull back those safeties, and Todd Gurley is not going to face nearly as many stacked boxes this season as he did in 2016. Obviously, that was a big reason why Gurley was not one of the guys who returned great on his investment that you would have paid to acquire him at the beginning of last season, whether it be in your auction or potentially a top three draft pick overall in 2016 for fantasy. He did not return anywhere near that. So again, a lot of that was due to the fact that the defenses were keying in on him. They knew that the opposing offense, the Rams, just were not able to pass the ball effectively. And having Watkins out there, again, is going to open up some lanes for him, I think. I think this is a good thing overall for him. But, again, the better passing game overall, if they're able to move the ball down the field, in addition to the fact that he's not going to face as many stack boxes, we're also probably going to see some potential for more touchdowns, which is obviously something that we need out of a guy like Todd Gurley to get into being back into a a fantasy running back number one. He's not a guy who's a great receiver out of the backfield or anything like that, so he does need those touchdowns to make up for the fact that he's not getting the PPR value that some of the other guys do. So I have obviously moved Todd Gurley up a little bit in my rankings. I am moving him up to number 10 in standard leagues, 12 in PPR leagues. I think Todd Gurley has some serious potential here to return RB1 value this season. And even if he doesn't, the thing that he does give you is those consistent carries. And I don't think that's going to change even despite the fact that the Rams might end up passing just a little bit more than they would have prior to acquiring Sammy Watkins. So now let's talk about the Jordan Matthews trade. Obviously, Jordan Matthews was traded as well. Buffalo gives up Sammy Watkins earlier in the day, or maybe, I don't know exactly what the timeline on this whole thing was, but this is the way that I saw it, was that they gave away Sammy Watkins, and then a couple hours later, they got Jordan Matthews in return for a third-round draft pick and cornerback Ronald Darby. So basically, guys, Buffalo is going to be getting Jordan Matthews, who is obviously a different type of receiver than Sammy Watkins, but he, again, does probably become essentially their their wide receiver one, at least for fantasy purposes. He is their wide receiver one, in my opinion. He was the odd man out in Philadelphia. Obviously, they got Alshon Jeffrey and Torrey Smith this offseason, and uh, the news was that he was still continuing to drop passes and things like that in practice, which is unfortunate. He was near the top of the league in drop passes in both 2015 and 2016, so that continues to be an issue in Philadelphia. They want to right that wrong. They want to get somebody who 
um, obviously is going to be able to catch the ball more effectively out of the uh, out of the slot. We don't know if they're necessarily going to get that, but you never know. Obviously, Jordan Matthews was not their guy, so Matthews does move to Buffalo. And, uh, you know, on paper, it's not really a great matchup, in my opinion. Like, it, it's very odd because Buffalo is not a team that was expected to run a lot of three wide receiver sets because they actually invested pretty heavily in their fullback. Um, they signed Patrick DeMarco to a fairly big contract. So that's kind of interesting. Now, we don't necessarily know that they're going to end up running more three wide receiver sets. We would presume that they're going to run, you know, at least a little bit more than they otherwise would have. However, we do think that they're going to end up running mostly two wide receiver sets with a tight end out there, a fullback, trying to pound the rock, running that old school football. That's what's been effective for Buffalo in the past with Tyrod Taylor because he's not a great, super accurate passer. He's just a guy that can get the ball into his receiver's hands at times and obviously make plays with his legs, which is a good thing for Jordan Matthews out of the slot who's able to find that open space and maybe make some receptions for first downs, keep drives alive, things like that. Um, obviously, now we do see that if he is moving there and he is going to be their top wide receiver, chances are that he's going to end up playing more snaps on the outside than he otherwise would have, especially in Philadelphia. He is, again, one of the guys that played primarily out of the slot in Philly. I do expect that he's still going to play primarily out of the slot in Buffalo, but they're going to want to have him on the field. So, again, if, if they're in a two-wide receiver set, I would expect that Jordan Matthews is going to be out there more often than not anyways. The weird thing about this whole thing with Jordan Matthews moving to Buffalo is that despite the fact that Buffalo is like a super run-heavy offense, it's kind of weird because Jordan Matthews is not a particularly good run blocker as a wide receiver. In, in fact, at one point in 2015, Matthews and Nelson Aguilar were both ranked as the bottom two wide receivers in the league by pro football focus as far as their ability to run, uh, run block. So that is not a very good match for a, a Buffalo offense that's looking to run the ball quite a bit this season. So again, very, very odd. Obviously, that doesn't affect individually Jordan Matthews' fantasy value. It's just weird on paper that this whole thing went down the way that it did. The positive note is that Matthews does, again, become the wide receiver one in Buffalo. He would have been probably the wide receiver two, maybe wide receiver three. He would have obviously played out of the slot still in, Buff in uh, Philadelphia. But uh, in, in Buffalo, he is essentially their top target. So I do expect that he is going to get more targets than he did in 2016. So there is a possibility that he does actually outproduce the numbers that he would have done in Philadelphia. I think overall this is a good thing for Jordan Matthews. May not be a good thing for the Buffalo offense as a whole to get rid of Sammy Watkins and get Jordan Matthews in return. But, you know, we'll have to see how it ends up playing on playing out on the field. Um, I do think that, again, he is going to lead the team in targets, which is obviously a good thing. But I am moving him up into my top 40 as far as standard formats. And I think he's about a mid-level wide receiver in PP, PPR formats. Uh, mid-level mid -level wide receiver three, I should say, in PPR formats. So, again, good value out of him if you can get him around there. I do think that he's going to return that for you. He may not have very many flashy games where he puts up the huge points. But, again, third-round value, not really looking for the huge points. We're just looking for somebody that can consistently produce decent numbers for us at our wide receiver three position. For the Philadelphia side of things, obviously this does not help the Philadelphia offense. Um, obviously we're taking away the only wide receiver that Jordan, with uh, Jordan Matthews, that Carson Wentz really had any sort of chemistry with. We've got Torrey Smith and Alshon Jeffrey who came there this offseason, but he has never even played a snap with those guys prior to the preseason. So it's going to be difficult, I think, early in the season for the Philadelphia offense as far as passing the football goes. Jordan Matthews is kind of that safety valve that really gave him consistent uh, open looks and things like that. Uh, when he's actually, you know, going over the middle and, and creating that separation. So that gave Carson Wentz some good opportunities. I do think now that that is going to be a little bit more difficult to come by because Philadelphia, unfortunately, doesn't have an obvious guy to slot in there as their slot wide receiver, at least that we've seen at this point. So um, obviously they have something in mind, but this does look pretty difficult on paper for Carson Wentz. I do think that you have to take him down just a little bit. Um, there's really no way to say that this is a positive move, I think, for Carson Wentz. So that's a little bit unfortunate. I'm going to go ahead and drop him down. I don't think that he was a viable starting option in standard leagues anyway, but I think that he's going to be down there in like the 25, 26 range at the quarterback position. I don't really think that Carson Wentz is likely to return you great value this season. He does turn the ball over quite a bit. So, you know, unfortunately, this isn't a great match for uh, Carson Wentz to, to lose Jordan Matthews. 
But it is a positive, I think, for Alshon Jeffrey and Torrey Smith, and maybe even Nelson Aguilar, who could slot in as the wide receiver playing out of the slot for Philadelphia primarily this season. We don't know that for a fact, but we do know that Alshon Jeffrey and Torrey Smith are projected to play on the outside on most snaps. Obviously, Aguilar will get some snaps on the outside as well. But when you're down there at the goal line, it makes a lot of sense to have a big guy like Alshon Jeffrey. And we've even seen Torrey Smith had a big season playing out of the uh, playing out of the out wide and being able to make big plays in the red zone as well. So unfortunately, I think Elton Nelson Aguilar maybe is still going to be the wide receiver three. But I do think that Aguilar does again potentially slot in there as their slot wide receiver, which should increase his value at least a little bit for dynasty leagues if you still decided to hold on to him in those type of formats. And Alshon Jeffrey and Torrey Smith should get more targets, which does bump them up just a couple of spots. I do think that Torrey Smith is still like a wide receiver five maybe, uh, but he does have some decent upside. He is a guy that can break big plays and he can certainly help you in best ball formats as well. The last guy that I want to talk about as far as this whole trade goes is tight end Zach Ertz for the Philadelphia Eagles. I do think that this is actually going to help him overall because I expect that he is going to slot in there as the slot wide receiver, essentially, despite the fact that he plays tight end. He did that a little bit last year, quite a bit, actually, uh, and, and he was fairly successful as a slot wide receiver as well. So I do think that this is a good thing for Zachary's fantasy value overall. Um, he might be the guy, as far as wide receivers or pass catchers on the team, that benefits the most from this whole move. If he is the guy that does slot in over Aguilar, Aguilar continues to struggle and drop easy passes and things like that, I think that Philadelphia is just going to go ahead and slot Zach Ertz right out from the tight end position out there, out wide into the slot, and he should be able to, to do fairly well for this team. He had pretty good chemistry, at least at the end of last season with Carson Wentz, and I don't see any reason why they won't continue to try and roll that out to start the 2017 season, and if it continues, Zach Ertz could be one of those breakout candidate tight ends that we could be talking about next year as a guy that we should have taken as a top five tight end. Right now, I do have him at number seven. I think that this move makes makes him move up from about number eight to number seven, slightly ahead of Kyle Rudolph, in my opinion, but I definitely think he is one of those maybe tier three tight ends that I'm really starting to try and, and go after. If I don't have to pay up for him, I certainly think he's a guy that could potentially produce big time numbers in this offense. He's not going to be the number one tight end. He's probably not going to finish ahead of Gronk or Kelsey or one of those guys or even Jimmy Graham. But that next tier down, I certainly think that he could get to that point and be a very good fantasy option in 12 team formats this season. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you drop a like on it. I think that we're going to be doing more of these as time goes on. We had some big news come out the past couple of days. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure you drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you are new. That's it for today's Fantasy Football Facts, and I will be back again soon. Talk to you guys then.